see here. Okay, uh, this is a tutorial just kind of showing you how that little uh, vine growing a leaf works. I've got this little pre-comp down here. We'll solo it. And uh, if I play that back, you can see it's just a little leaf that has a little bit of an inertial bounce on it that springs up a little scale parameter and a little rotation parameter with an inertial bounce. And uh, that's what that leaf does. And we don't need to see it, so we'll turn the uh, solo off. And we'll also turn the eyeball off so we don't see it at all. Then if we look at the vine uh, layer, it's just a solid layer, which is layer, new, solid, always. doesn't matter what color it is because the effect's going to take over on it. And the effect is going to be 3D strokes, which is just like After Effects strokes effect, except it's 3D. As you, and it has other little fun things like the taper. So it'll make it uh, taper at the end. Let's solo that as well. So we're just looking at that layer for the vine. So that's growing itself, and it's just a path. What you do is you take a solid layer and then use the pen tool, and if you draw with that active, you create these little bezier shapes. If I turn the... Uh, uh, let's see here, the eyeball off of it, maybe. Nope, that's not going to do it. Uh, anyways. There it is. So you can see I just took the pen tool and made a couple of beziers. Later on, if you wanted to, I didn't do that, but you can even select these beziers and improve upon them, so, you know, bring them out and play around with the curve on them. It's, uh, and you can add to them uh, like you can in Illustrator with all these other tools down here or convert them from corner points to uh, curve points. Uh, but it's fun to even do that in Illustrator and cut and paste your paths. That will work as well. Anyways, so we take that and we apply it to the, um, uh, uh, the 3D effect, Chop Code's 3D stroke effect. And if I hit U for Uber key to show you keyframes, <coughs> it creates a mask. And it, uh, uh, as you can see, and uh, down in here, that's the 3D stroke. All you do is you tell it what to... Uh, now, the, the mask itself is a shape, as you can see. It's not really at a, a points in time. Uh, uh, so what it tells you to do is just to uh, uh, set a keyframe for that mask path that that's happening, and then you can apply it to your particle system real easily. So, uh, and then the 3D stroke effect, you really just uh, program, or, or rather uh, set keyframes for the beginning which would be 0% uh, end, end on the effect. And then at the end, down in here, where it's 100% ended on the effect. And uh, then it'll grow itself. And then I also turned on taper, stuff like that. The 3D effect in getting the vine to grow was pretty easy, I believe, for you. The problem was uh, when we turned the particles on and tried to mask these particles that we created, I'll turn the eyeballs on those, when we tried to mask those particles, which we made into that little leaf layer, um, it wasn't, they weren't staying, they weren't sticking. And the problem was what we were doing was probably using the position keyframe. We were going in here and hitting P and using that position keyframe to mask to the path. Uh, but, and also we were using a null object to, uh, mask, to, to parent the particles to that, which is very complex. You don't need to do that. You can just select the particles. And the trick here is you don't want to do it at the position keyframe. Instead, I'm going to hold my shift and hit E for effect. You want to do it under Particulars keyframe. If I turn down Particular, again, it's up here as well. It's going to be under the emitter part. And over here, the position X, Y. That's what we keyframe. And as you can see, that's what I've keyframed here. Now, when you do that, it gives you a default two-second uh, path. As you can see, that's what that is. Later on, when we put this other path on it, we can always set that however we want by just clicking on the emitter to get those keyframes and then holding our option key down and then using it as a rubber band with the option key held down. So we can spread those out however we want. I want to undo that. The default's always two seconds. It's never right. So we always adjust those that way by having it, uh, the option key held down. So um, that will take care of them hugging that surface. As you can see, that was the only uh, catch-22 as it was doing that. So now that we've got it uh, mapped to that, the trick is, is how do you get that, uh, that those spaces? And they're here. Here's the easiest way. You just come back here and grab any keyframe along that mass path. And there may not be one there. So you just set a keyframe for the mass path. You you, you uh, copy that, and then you go to uh, particulars um, effects, and then the position of the uh, particular effect, the X and the Y, and you just paste those keyframes. You select it and you paste it. 
it'll be a two second uh, scenario where it goes out like this. And you can adjust the tempo and how thick and thin it is and, and, the, and uh, also the color. Uh, all that's taken over by uh, 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 the, the little settings that are in here that I'm giving you. Um, at any rate, uh, that's amazing with just a little drawn shape that I did it myself. I got some work to do on the leaves, but they're working. And, uh, and on the other uh, tutorial, he makes it really complex by taking the vine and uh, into a pre-comp and then doubling that layer and then offsetting it and putting a little bit of a uh, 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 a blending mode on it and things like that to make it look more three-dimensional. This is as easy as it gets, the one I've got, and that's fine, just simple, simple shapes. Um, and the same thing with my particle. The leaf itself could use a lot of work. It's just a simple shape that just evolves up. It's a, uh, a shape layer. Um, let me see here. Now, when you're doing that, you got to think you're going to do that with any shape. Uh, I drew that one, but if I go over to this main comp two in my, uh, uh, I have down in here. Uh, let me just turn off all my uh, um, layers there. Okay, I've got a. I'm going to solo turn on the eyeball on this bottom one here. Uh, that's just a a text layer. Um, I think um, probably uh, Madre script. And so I took that and auto-traced it. And when you do that, I'm going to turn the eyeball off. You get um, an outline of that script. That's what we're seeing here. So i um, turn this top eyeball off, too. Um, I think that's right. Uh, so over here, I've got that same leaf in the same composition. And I've got the particles that the leaf's attached to. So it's going to follow, follow those particles no matter what. And if I just played it back and didn't move those particles, it would just spit out those particles in one spot and not do anything because they're supposed to just sort of stay there. Um, so instead, I went there to this auto trace layer, and I have a mask now. I actually, have several masks because you have counter spaces and things like that. But I just copied the keyframe on one of them. Just made a keyframe anywhere myself. Just put my on any of those mask paths, and then made a copy of it. Then I went over to my particle system, and again, it's not the position keyframe. It's not the, our, our traditional parameter. But instead, we go to the effects, and it's going to be under particulars emitter. That's where we look for it down in here, the position X, Y. Then when you do that, it'll stick and it won't go anywhere. And so you get something like this that's going on. And you can imagine just combining that. And this is happening in real time. Uh, this is pretty quick. Uh, but you can imagine, uh, I've got so, so too many layers turned on there too. If I put it over here, I'll figure out which one those ones those are. Uh, I'm hit the uh, Select all, Command A, and then hit U just to show all my keyframes. Hit them again to close them all up. Real quick trick there. Um, let me see here. I don't need that one on. There it was. So I didn't need that auto trace. The only th reason I did that auto trace was to get the path from that mask. That was the only reason I did, did, needed to do that. I could auto trace or live trace something in Illustrator and bring that over as well. So, anyways, I don't need it anymore. So now if I rewind and take a look at it, it'll look a little bit more interesting. There we go. And then you can combine uh, other mini compositions that make it grow off to the side and just continue off wherever you want it to go, really, and do whatever you want it to do. Anyways, just giving you some ideas, so I uh, hope this helps.